Welcome to Old Nurse Knows. I'm Claire Kettler, Old Nurse, here to offer practical information about health, resources, and encouragement for you to improve your own physical, mental, and spiritual health. I've been privileged to be with families as their baby is born or their loved one is dying. I've seen frightening injuries and incredible recovery. I've spent years studying both medical and nursing topics. Own your health. You can be in charge. Hit the subscribe button. Feel free to check out my website, nhnursehealthcoach.org. Leave a like. Leave a comment. I would like to hear from you. Today's topic is Getting Past Anger, Episode 6. Today's quote is, Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Anger, the root, ango, comes from Latin and means to choke, strangle, and in Greek it meant to strangle. A relative said to me last week while we were talking on the phone, Claire, you're so angry. Why are you so angry? I didn't think that I was angry, so I denied it. I did apologize, but in thinking about it later, I was angry, but I did not need to express my anger so that my relative noticed. Anger is a pretty basic emotion, human emotion. Seeing red is very common. A nationwide U.S. survey of 34,000 adults published in 2015 found that a little under 8% of those surveyed self-reported anger as inappropriate, intense, or poorly controlled. This reported anger was described as one of the following, triggered by small things, frequent, felt out of control, involved hitting others, or throwing things. Do a quick survey of yourself and try to remember the last time you were angry and it was not a good time for you. When a person gets angry, they experience the fight or flight response. Anger is an automatic emotion that comes on suddenly. It's what a person does with their anger that makes a difference. Most people don't act on their anger, but it's possible that anger is increasing in the U.S. For instance, road rage is an anger response that has been increasing over the past decade or so. Getting angry is a fight-or-flight response, which can be stopped by deep, slow breathing. Having frequent anger episodes triggering the fight-or-flight response can make several medical conditions worse. Anger is also an independent risk factor for heart attacks. Contrast anger, an automatic emotion, with shame, guilt, or pride, which require self-reflection and self-evaluation. I've become angry at something, usually that's not working right, but no one's around except me and the thing I'm angry at. For instance, a tree that won't cut. I might think I may throw my handsaw in anger because I know no one is observing me. If someone were to observe me throwing the saw, I would feel shame at my behavior. I realize this, and I'm careful not to throw things in anger when others are around. Throwing the saw doesn't help, though. It only prolongs my anger response. The tree trunk, trunk stays uncut, and I might have broken my saw, though I didn't luckily. A different example is when I learned that my coworker had cheated in obtaining the vacation week that I had also signed up for. I was angry, but I did nothing. I likely raised my voice, which is a sign of anger, when describing this unfair problem to my husband. I did launch into a problem-solving mode and eventually resigned from that job in order to obtain the specific vacation week. I was unable to go on the planned running trip around Mount Rainier scheduled only for that week. Workplace violence is a hot topic, especially in hospitals. As a nurse in a hospital, I suffered verbal attacks by patients and other healthcare workers and an occasional physical, physical attack. I'm glad to not be working in a hospital any longer for this and many other reasons. There's no harm in getting angry. Quickly realizing that you're angry and not acting on your anger, calming down, and then using your brain to solve the problem now and for the future. Next time, leave a few minutes early in case of a traffic delay. Or walk away from a distressing physical setting, which is making you angry. Use slow, deep breathing to calm yourself. Physical expressions of anger, such as hitting, using profane language, 
and throwing things can be a learned and unfortunately reinforced behavior. So parents, beware. Can anger ever be a good thing? Once you've calmed down and are ready to get past your anger, you can put your energy into productive solutions. Going back to the phone incident with my relative, I'm not innocent. I should have been able to be the bigger person, but I wasn't. I tried to steal a, steer away from politics as we don't agree, and I redirected the conversation a couple of times as I remember it. This relative kept bringing the conversation back to a certain weather-related incident that had turned into a political browbeating of a large U.S. business. I said, I don't agree with you, and the relative kept asking why not, and I finally told them I didn't agree why I didn't agree as my voice raised. I did not make any personal attacks on my relative's character whatsoever. I limited all my statements to the ongoing national political theater. A lot of times when people are angry, they do make very bad statements. So watch that in yourself. But that's when the relative said that I was angry and continue on to say that I had made personal attacks because we didn't agree. The relative asked me what was wrong with me, that I had no charity toward a certain public figure. And then continued on to say that it seemed likely that I wanted to blow up the government and was I was also likely depressed and suicidal as well. This relative said that they were ready to never speak to me again. Hmm. This is when I decided to do this podcast. Writing about particular problems can sometimes help me. Getting past the anger that I feel will help me live a less stressful life, which will contribute to my overall healthiness. I'm not the only one experiencing grave disappointment at national events and priorities. I'm not the only one who's been labeled with some very negative descriptive terms by now former friends and current relatives related to my positions versus nationally pronounced correct leanings. I'm not the only one who's been ordered to be silent on certain topics by friends or family members who do not feel the need to refrain from their own opinions. I'm not the only one to resign from my employment because my employer and the federal government was mandating that I take something both ineffective and harmful. Knowing that I'm not the only one feeling these things is not particularly helpful as I found that I tend to stew when I discuss these upsetting developments with other like-minded individuals. There is a great deal to be angry about, but a continual angry mood is very harmful for my health. So what to do? Slow deep breathing will stop my stress response. Self-reflection helps me focus on what I'm thankful for. Self-evaluation helps me focus on what I can do to help me live a healthier, happier life. And then it helps me decide what I should do next. Overall, my life has greatly improved since September 2021. I'm very healthy with no chronic diseases and have time to keep in good physical shape. I can still get up and down local mountains easily year-round, which I love to do. I have a close relationship with my husband. I have no job stress and no debt. I have several enjoyable hobbies and have made some new friends. I focus on what I have control over and my response to the world. I usually make at least one health goal to work on until I achieve it or change the goal. My plan is to get out on a mountain hike or run locally at least once per week this whole year. This this has both cardiovascular as well as mental benefits. Here's a view from a recent hike I did with a friend. If you have an opportunity to get outdoors and enjoy the sunshine while also getting some exercise, your body and mind will thank you. You might feel your stress level go down and create a pleasant memory that you can recall next time you're stressed. You might even plan to repeat the fun outdoor activity. My next plan is to also reflect daily on how I'm handling frustration. Even if I don't meet these daily or weekly goals, I'll keep trying the next day or the next week. I'll just keep trying. If I find that I'm continually not meeting my goals, it might be time to revise them. There's always more that I could do to keep healthy, and so I'll just keep trying. I don't want to be the hot-tempered person or the one easily angered. Here's some advice I'll take for myself. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. 
we can model this approach for those around us. Till next time, this is Claire, Old Nurse on Old Nurse Knows. If life gives you lemons, make lemonade, and then enjoy your lemonade. Visit me on my website at nhnursehealthcoach.org.